Hey guys, Speed Rebel Chris Tomer here on this Monday. We've got snow and wind in Colorado. This is the uh, the live camera there at Eldora Ski Area, one of the right up on the uh, Continental Divide there along the Front Range um, in the Indian Peaks. Typically a very windy area, but today 60, 70, 80, 90 mile an hour winds up there, and it looks like we've already picked up three and a half, maybe three, three and a half, four inches of snow up there. Uh, with this front. This one had a little bit more moisture with it than the one that went through um, a couple of days ago. So that's Eldora. Um, this is Loveland Ski Area. It is blowing and it is snowing. And they're also blowing snow up there uh, at Loveland. You can see the uh, the snow guns right here, which are firing. Temperatures are in the, uh, the 20s up there and you've got natural snow coming down. Really looking good. I think Loveland could pick up, you know, a couple or three inches out of this. Certainly Maybe not as much as what uh, Eldora's got, but uh, certainly two or three inches. And the front actually came out of Wyoming, and you can see this here at uh, Jackson Hole. Actually picked up a very light amount, like a, like a dusting here uh, across the base, the middle of the mountain, and up higher. So a little bit of snow as that uh, was coming out of uh, Wyoming. Here's radar across the, uh, the west. There's a little bit... And so the direction of flow is kind of out of this direction. So you've got a little bit of leftover precip up here in Montana, a tiny bit over the top of the Tetons and the Wind Rivers. And the rest of it is with the main front, which is down in Colorado. And you can see the um, the arcing or this precip here with the, the front in this sort of northwest flow. And we see this all the time in the winter. It's a very efficient flow, and it's doing it right now. It's generating... That snow up there across uh, Eldora and Loveland, Berthet Pass, and uh, it's pushing and pre and really just uh, um, pinching the pressure gradient. And so we're going to see these very high winds come out of this flow today down the Front Range High Peaks and across uh, the Front Range uh, I-25, Denver, Boulder. Um, some pretty strong winds today. Uh, so that's radar. Let me take you into my bullet points here, and we'll talk a little bit about what I'm expecting. So we've got the windy front. That's happening right now. Wind gusts up there in Rocky Mountain National, uh, Bear Lake, Berthoud Pass. Could run up to 90, 95 miles per hour, believe it or not, during the height of this. So, I mean, this is a this is a pretty intense, intense pinching of the pressure gradient. Then we're going to have to deal with some tropical remnants, 1023, 1024. That has slowed down about 12 to 24 hours. It looked like it might come through 22, 23. Now it's 23, 24. There's a little bit of moisture, a little bit of snow for Colorado, the four corners as that comes through. Still looking at this atmospheric river watch on after 1024. It looks to me like most of the focus early on is going to be sort of Oregon and Washington State. Uh, maybe up in the parts of the coastal range of BC. So that's the initial focus, but I'll show you the animated um, water vapor. And it may actually, we may get two or three surges of this into early November. So it's not just one push. There are the best odds of snow for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. So the next best chance of snow in Utah is late on the 22nd and into the 23rd, and then another chance 25, 26, 27. That later surge of snow is what's coming with the uh, the atmospheric river potential. So whatever hits the west coast would then get blown into the interior Rockies. So there's definitely something there to look forward to. Here's the water vapor satellite imagery. So remember on this, your oranges, reds, blacks, largely the dry air. But the actions up here where you see the whites and the blue colors, look at this big low moving in uh, to the, the Pacific Northwest. A lot of moisture content with this. Let's see if we can spot the front moving through Colorado. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like right in here. That's that windy front. But this is really the next key player. That's the one to watch in the forecast. Um, let me take you to the uh, forecast radar and satellite. So we'll start this up at noon time today, Monday, October 20th. Now at this point, um, the snow in Wyoming and Colorado has pretty much dried up. The front has moved its way through. The wind has shifted direction. So let's move this in, into the future here. All right, here we are, dinner time today. Uh, here are the early morning hours of, uh, we'll just call this 6 a.m. on Tuesday. There's the lunch hour on Tuesday. Again, we're just kind of waiting here. Um, here's probably 6 a.m. on Wednesday. Now, at this point, 
uh, focus down here because this is where the remnant tropical moisture is going to come from and kind of move across the four corners. Um, it doesn't look like a major issue, but it will definitely bring some moisture. So that's lunchtime on Wednesday. Here we are at dinner time on Wednesday, and you can definitely see that moisture, that sort of that arcing pattern of moisture coming in um, out of the four corners. And then notice up here in the Pacific Northwest, um, it's really kind of looking at the leading edge of what could be that atmospheric river setup at that point. Um, we got one more movement here. Here we go. Early morning hours on Thursday, October uh, 23rd. There's your leftover remnant moisture. And again, there's the beginning potentially of that uh, that atmospheric river pattern. So let's look at the, uh, the atmospheric pressure anomalies. So we'll start today. And you can see what we've got. So there's our windy front right there with our area of low pressure. There's the tropical remnants right there. So all that plays into the forecast. Let's go to 1023. So on 1023, um, there's our remnant tropical moisture moving through. And it's again, it's very small, but there's a bit of drop in pressures there. Um, big drop over the, uh, the east coast. And then you can kind of just see the start of our drop in pressures coming in off the Pacific. And you can really see it right here. So if we do get some atmospheric river contribution here, this is 1026 on Sunday. Again, the focus, a few days ago, it looked like it might be a little bit further to the south, but now you can see the, the real drop in pressures is to the north. It's up here in the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Washington, BC, but there's a little bit of a, a kicker storm out here out ahead of it. So that's on 1026. There's going to be a powerful jet stream associated with this, um, escorting all this in. So this is somewhere between 1024, 25, and 26. Powerful 180 mile an hour jet stream moving in. You can see what it's doing. It brings all this moisture in off the Pacific into the Pacific Northwest. And at times you're going to get waves that move into the interior states, Utah, Nevada, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado. So it's not just confined to the coast. It will have impacts into the interior. You can really see it here. This is the uh, this is total uh, water vapor in the column here. And so look for the greens, look for the yellows, look for the little red areas. Um, and, and we'll start this again at the beginning, right here. So you've got one surge. You've got uh, potentially another surge there and then another one at the end. So there could be two or three surges of this. We call this the Pineapple Express because that jet stream, that conveyor belt reaches all the way back towards Hawaii and picks up some of that moisture and then escorts it into the West Coast, slams it up against the mountains. And, and this, it's like little rivers of moisture that get funneled into the West Coast. So this could be something very interesting. Um, there's a little bit of excitement in the forecast. I'll show it to you right here. I switched the, uh, the detail location, the forecast location, to the Pacific Northwest. If you were to look at the map, the little red dots up there and somewhere between Oregon and Washington, that's the target area. And so you can see on around the 23, 24, 25 time frame, this definitely indicates a moderate to low level strong intensity AR uh, event with this is called integrated vapor transport. And so it's definitely seeing that green that I just showed you, which is right here. It's definitely seeing that those plumes move in. The target area is just a little bit further to the north up there in the Pacific Northwest. Now, will that be the case with the second and third surges? Not sure. It's somewhere. Uh, it's somewhere there like Northern California, Oregon, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, but that is definitely something to watch because then that moisture, it, it's not its not hitting in isolation and then gets moved into the interior Rockies and will, infect, will affect uh, Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado with snow potential. Okay, let's take a look. In fact, this is the, this is the rain plume. It's a moisture plume, but for Olympia, Washington, um, this is a big surge in rain in Olympia. Look at this. This is forecast rain on the ensemble, and this generates almost five inches of rain up there. So I showed you the potential for a moderate to strong intensity atmospheric river. The payoff is right here. This is about five inches of rain. That would translate into snow over the very highest cascades. Um, 
So even in the interior, we're probably talking about snow. This is Jackson, Wyoming. Uh, this generates about a foot through November 4th. Um, you can see the biggest acceleration up of snow is somewhere between 24, 25, 26, 27. But look at these air bars are up around 20 inches by November 4th. So that's Jackson. If you were looking at the Pacific Northwest, Mount Rainier would be easily looking at a couple of feet, maybe more of snowfall. So there's wide ranging impacts to this if this AR actually plays out. In Colorado, this is Berthoud Pass. You can see a couple little bumps here along the way. Uh, 9, 10, 11 inches of snow as an ensemble mean there by the end, and that's uh, a total by November 4th. So snow Washington State, Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, Utah, all included within this. Here's your five-day snow forecast. So this just catches the very beginning of that, that river potential, and you can see anywhere in the pink purple is over six inches. I mean, you're talking you know, potentially over a foot easily up here into very uh, northern uh, California, uh, Oregon, Utah, and or, uh, Washington State up into parts of uh, interior BC and also coastal BC. I mean, these are heavy amounts of snow. But like I said, even into Utah, you're looking at potentially over six inches there, Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. And this is just a five-day snow forecast. So let's zoom in. Washington State, Oregon, uh, Rainier certainly uh, in for potentially a couple of feet of snow. But look at these numbers. I mean, that's three feet up there, a couple of feet down the spine of the Cascades into parts of Oregon over the high volcanoes. Um, even a little bit closer to the, uh, the coast there as well, potentially in some of the high Olympias. Um, okay, let's go into the interior. So here's Wyoming, Montana, Utah, Colorado. So 6 to 12 inches up here. Tetons, Wind Rivers, Yellowstone. Um, down here into Utah, potentially up to 6, maybe over 6 in the high Uintas. I have a feeling these numbers are going to go up. Keep in mind, this is a 5-day snow forecast. So beyond this, there's significant moisture. And I think beyond this, we're easily talking about a foot. But at this point, the five-day snow forecast, potentially 6 to 12 there over some of the highest peaks of Colorado. All right, one more zoom into Colorado. Now you can see all the zones. More of it is right along I-70 and north. That's the 6 to 12, less as you go south of I-70. So, guys, we have a lot of, to look forward to with this, uh, this potentially moist flow coming in and this atmospheric river setup. Let me go back to the, the five-day snow forecast. I mean, you can see it um, just catching the leading edge of this AR. And beyond this, there's some pretty big totals. So thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.